appear in the video. And welcome to uh, August edition of Learn with Google. Um, for those of you who were live in the room, you just heard a little jazzy vibe. Um, I just threw this together just before this started using Suno, a uh, little uh, audio AI editor, a uh, little song about today for what it's worth. Um, but today, I'm not going to start that again. Let me have the next slide. There we go. Um, so well, welcome to Learn with Google. Uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about the power of collaboration and we're talking to uh, a couple of teacher friends who are joining us today uh, to share ideas, tips and ideas for working together. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, I will, we have any Kiwis in the room? Nathan, Jennifer, you a Kiwi? If either of you would like to do this, you're welcome. Otherwise, I will totally butcher it. Okay. Um, te he Māori ora i nā wanga whaka e e te wai tuku kire ki te tup, uh, tupuna tēnā koe tēnā koto katoa. I acknowledge and respect the many iwi tribes of New Zealand uh, as the Tangata Whenua of Aotearoa and we commit to upholding the partnership of the Treaty of Waitangi. Lovely. Thank you, my friend. You did a much better job than I would have. So thanks for acknowledging that. And just jumping back across to our side of the ditch, just to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we meet, whose cultures and customs have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. And we honour the presence of the ancestors who reside in the imagination of this land, wherever that happens to be for you today. Um, all right. So uh, there's our Google for Education team. We are all exhausted. <laughs> We've all been down in... Um, in uh, in Melbourne for the Edutech event this week, and I think most of the people you're looking at this slide are probably uh, pretty darn tired right now. Not to mention some of the other people who are in this call who are not on that slide, but we're definitely there and we're definitely busy. Um, so thank you to you guys as well. Uh, today we are hearing from uh, hopefully three teachers. Oh, I notice one of them is not yet here, so we'll see. Um, but we hopefully hear from Jody McDonnell. Um, uh, Ryan Elwell and Kate McIntosh, and they're going to share some ideas for the way they use Google uh, Workspace to collaborate and just bring teams together to share uh, and work together, because that's really what it's all about. Um, that collaboration DNA has always been in Google's products right from day one. Um, we've always had a system where you can share and work together and collaborate, um, and so we're pretty proud of the way that works. We think it's the best. Um, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll hear from some of that today. Uh, so we were going to hear from Jody, but I haven't heard from her. She may be stuck in transport at the moment. So we might come back to Jody if she jumps in. Um, so Ryan, I will throw to you, my friend. Uh, I'll get you to introduce yourself and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I think you have control of the slides, or if you don't, just let me know and I will advance them for you. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll do the whole click thing. Thank you, Chris. So uh, he was generous enough to give me the next 55 minutes with you all. So. This should go nice and quickly. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm Director of Digital Pedagogies and Online Safety Education at the ACT. I was a teacher for 20 years, a um, couple of hemispheres, a bunch of different places, and um, I found a happy home here in Canberra. And then a couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to find a position in doing one of the things I'm really passionate about with my teaching, and that was the integration of digital tools and technology. Slide, please. All right. And I think you have control of the slides now. Just popped up, thank you. Um, so this is one of those features that I, I see when I when I go into docs and slides and I looked at it for a while and I had that little blue new exclamation point and I just went, well, that's, that's too official because I'm just a teacher, but it's called approvals and it was in Google Docs and you can find it under the, the file setting and then it's the second kind of block of things and it says approvals, maybe you clicked on it. I think that's a little rubber stamp icon, but after a little while, I, I started to play around with it and I found it was incredibly useful for uh, working in teams and I found that out um, through working with an early years team because they're not really using a lot of Google workspace with their students but they still had access and they still wanted to get a lot out of it so that was the, my first kind of dive in was these teachers absolutely went crazy with the approvals function but once I saw how well it worked from there it was easy to kind of push from teacher to student student to teacher and even student to student getting a lot out because with classes being flipped and kind of things happening in and out of school with all this digital technology enabling learning in so many different ways 
being able to get approvals and be in touch without having to text or email and all this other stuff, it just it cuts out a few extra steps when you don't really need them. So all you do is you go to file approvals. And once you do, a little box will pop up on the right there and it'll say make a request. Um, when you make a request, essentially, you're just going to be notifying somebody in Google Drive. They'll get an email wherever their Google account is connected to. Or I'll show you at the end that there's another way that you can check and see if you've got any approvals at all. Essentially, you pop in anybody's email. You can type in as many as you want. You can set a date and a time if you want an approval done. And what are you approving? So you, there's lots of ways to do it. I found the best way was to just type in the message. This is my final draft. I was hoping you could have a look at paragraph three to make sure those were the changes that you wanted. This is the new lesson plan we're going to start next week. I wanted to see if you had anything you wanted to add to the activities part. Just something friendly because we're all very polite to one another. Uh, and then you'll see there's two tick boxes right there. The first one is allow approvers to edit the file. So you can actually set it if you wanted to send it to somebody and just let them comment on it, let them see it, and let them either say yay or nay, or you can actually give them the power to change in order to meet whatever the approval is. And then that last one down there says lock the file before sending approval request. And that'll come up in a moment, but essentially once somebody does something and approves it, it will lock the file from any additional edits until you, the person that requested the approval, says, okay, we're good, and then start the process again if you need to. So when you do this, you can see you can add all those people, you can type in those messages, and what you'll see is a little blue bar at the top of your Google Doc that'll say pending approval, and that means that it's all been sent. You can always click that little view details thing on the side there as well. Um, and what, when you have that, that's what you'll see, but obviously the person that you sent the approval to is gonna see something as well, and that's gonna look a little bit different. So one really amazing thing is that little I button in Google Drive, that little pops up like a, a little sidebar and you can see activity, details, but also there's an approvals tab. So if you are using approvals or you have a lot of approvals going between you and your class or students to students, by going into approvals, you'll see a list of exactly where everything's going, when it's due, what's your responsibility, what's you know what's past due. Um, and from there, you can click in, you can add comments. You don't even need to go into all of these documents to do all this stuff. You can get to it right from Google Drive. In terms of use cases, like I said, I didn't know where it fit. It, you kind of needed that jump start, and that's what that early years team I worked with really was. They do all of their, um, kind of group unit planning in Google Classroom. But in Google Classroom, if you leave a comment or if you drop a document, you have to you know, leave a comment and the other person has to go into Classroom, see the comment, then respond. But with this, an email pops up within seconds. They know that there's an approval thing. So when they have that you know, 45 minute lunch that most teachers are used to by now, they can pop in, get those things, send it right back. And you're not spending all that time kind of waiting for things to trans, um, transmit between people or go back and forth. Uh, designing assessments. This is my section. This is your section. Hey, I need this on. Is this okay with you? Um, and also for vertical type of documents, if I want to send a letter to parents or if I've got a very, maybe a very delicate parent email situation, I can just send a draft to my SLC or my department chair, say, hey, is this approved? Are you good with it? It's now documented, which is always nice to have. Um, and it's just a nice way to keep things moving. In terms of teacher to student, uh, students can submit on Google Classroom like normal. But in terms of the drafting process, a nice documented feedback cycle where you guys are going back and forth. Um, and student to student is also great as well because students have the ability, if you're working in a group, you can send between things. This is a great way to build those group dynamics and leadership things where one person's kind of in charge and kind of running the show. Um, so there, there's all kinds of ways you can use the approvals tab. So if you've been curious about it, I really recommend giving it a try because it really has made a difference in three different sections um, for year levels all the way up through uh, early years up through college. So that was mine. And the last part I wanted to talk about is the fact that, um, oh, this is that locked file I wanted to show you. So whenever you hit the approval, so if somebody sends something to me for approval and I approve it, it will lock the document so nobody changes it. Um, but the really cool thing is that I didn't even notice for a while is that it's not just for Google Docs, it's actually in Docs, Slides, and Sheets. So all three of those things have the approval tab. And what's even better, right in Google Drive, if you just right click on any document, if that is one of those three things, uh, you can just go down to Share, and where that normal Share is, there's the approval thing right there. You don't even need to open it. Opens up that sidebar. You can do all that stuff right in Google Drive. So that was my contribution, Chris. I guess I'll hand back to you now. 
Thanks, Ryan. That's awesome. I must admit, I, I, I mean, I have used it a few times, but it's always been in kind of the official capacity. It's like a, a, a policy approval or something. And I like the way you're thinking a little bit more laterally there about using it in sort of other contexts as well. I don't know if anyone else in the room today has any uh, approval stories. You're welcome to share them. Uh, otherwise, we'll move on. But um, anyone else using approvals? I, I think you know, like well, you've got something uh, new to play with. Then I should also point out, Ryan, that this is a feature from Workspace Plus, um, oh. so it is not in the fundamentals edition. But I think uh, most uh, larger jurisdictions around Australia are using um, Workspace Plus, and most of the Catholic systems as well are using Plus. So uh, there are many people who will get value from that. So thanks for sharing. Awesome. All right. Uh, Jody McDonald, I see you've just popped in. Are you okay to talk? I see you're on a train. <laughs> All right. Five minutes. All right. Yeah, we'll see how we go. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, right. Ryan, I'm going to take you off the pinned stage here. And I'm going to put Kate McIntosh on the pinned stage. Like so. Everyone. There you go. You should all see Kate a little bit bigger now. Um, as big as on Tuesday in that big uh, no, that, was, that was pretty amazing, wasn't it? Uh, and Kate, I'm just going to also give you co presenter rights as well, so you should be able to change your own slides. Um, but yeah, over to you, I'll get you to introduce yourself and tell us how you are using Workspace to collaborate. Yes, uh, yes, my name is Kate McIntosh, I'm a, a STEAM teacher at my school and I'm the digital technologies leader. And I'm just going to share some simple ways that I've found uh, to teach kids how to collaborate online together and how they can gather feedback from their peers and their teachers. All right. Have you got the slide control? Yes, you do. Good. So um, I, I had started calling these like digi desks, but what I had, um, when I was searching my drive for examples of these, I realized there's quite a few companies that are called like digi desks. So I feel like I maybe need to um, figure out a different thing for me to call them. I'm just going with digital desks for now. Um, so essentially I use Google Slides for this and depending on how many uh, children are in my class, I make that many slides plus one more that sort of acts as my teacher desk. So to begin with, there is a lot of like um, prep work to be able to do this. So every student needs to know what number they are in the role. It, 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 it's kind of a thing that most teachers in my school do anyway just as a um, safety thing they know what number they are in the role so if someone is missing in an evacuation like that number is missing in the role anyway so our kids know what number they are in the role so they know when they open up digital desks in the slide deck their slide is always going to be number three so they can then add their name to their slide and that's where they're doing their work from so Kind of the prep work is we know that we can't type on someone else's slide when they haven't given us permission to. We can add comments. Um, we can't delete people's work. We can't move our slide in the deck. So there's a little bit of prep work that comes to it. But, you know, if you're if you're setting this up, that is, you know, a session in itself, learning how to undo a mistake if you've accidentally started typing on somebody's slide, things like that. Um, so once you've assigned a slide to each of your students, I have um, created, and it's it's different depending on what the use is, but I've come up with a bit of a colour code. So you can see the little tabs on their notebook. Red is I need some help. Pink is I'm finished. Green is I'm all good. And yellow is I'm doing okay. So um, I can see at a glance students that are needing a bit more support or students that might be finished so I can go and have a look at what they've done, etc. Um, so yeah, this enables peer and teacher feedback. 
So if we go into grid view, like the GIF is showing you, you'll see the very last slide is my teacher desk. And I've got little images of the desks and those are linked directly to that student slide. So I can go to my desk. I know I want to look at, and in a non-generic uh, example, instead of the slide number, I have the child's name. So I can just click on their desk and go straight to them. Or I can see in grid view that five kids are finished, three really need some help, and whatever else might be uh, going on there. So um, if a student's struggling, I can suggest a desk number for them to go and have a look at. So I might add a uh, comment on their name saying, hey, I suggest going and having a look at slide number 12. That might give you an idea. Um, and, you know, we might stop at some point and say, okay, I want you to go two slides down, read what they've been up to give them some feedback and then you can get back to work or I might say if you're in um, if you are number five go to 15 if you're 15 go to five anyway however it may work so there's lots of different ways you can make sure that the feedback is uh, like evenly spread uh, so when students they might finish their work early I can say all right well I want you to go give feedback on five people's work your comments need to be focused on whatever it might be um and they actually they really enjoy it like an, a, a task where if they were just working in their own document and having to share it with someone else to give feedback um it just brings a whole different vibe um to the classroom and i've got i think there's one more slide Yes, this is just a different example of how I've used it with younger students. I didn't have the um, the colour coding on this one because this was just sort of brainstorming for a uh, digital stop motion they were doing. So they had to come up with four different ideas for their stop motions. And once they'd come up with their four ideas, they would look through everybody else's and they'd have to give feedback on which one they liked the best or, you know, whatever it may be. We've also done this um, for summarising chapters in a story, um, posing questions and heaps of different applications for it. Um, but I've just found it's just, it's just a fun way for kids to be collaborating and seeing each other's work. And it gets them used to... Um, you know, like when someone's on their slide or someone's where they're going to type, hey, what are you doing on my slide? <laughs> like that's the whole point. They're allowed to be on your slide because they can, you know, gather ideas from you. We're all working together. Um, you'll know if someone's copied because it will be exactly the same and I'll see who's typed it first. So, there's, you know, there's no worries about that. If you type on someone's thing, I can look in the activity history and, and see who's done what. Um, so, yeah. My kids have just really enjoyed, it's just a little bit novel and makes giving feedback a bit more entertaining. And then I don't have to go in and out of 23 different documents. Like I know in Google Classroom you can do the drop down and then pick another student, but literally if it's just open and all of their work is there, it just makes it so much easier. Thanks, Kate. That's awesome. I as think usual last slide uh, you know i think that that grid view thing in slides is something yeah. a lot of people don't I, I don't hear people talking about that nearly as much as i yeah think they should really um, handy you know one of one of the requests like we do hear sometimes is people want the ability for teachers to be able to sort of see the desk yeah. what kids are doing and although we don't really provide that full functionality per se if kids are working in slides you've kind of got that when you go yeah. into that sort of grid view mode so it's really oh nice. and i did want to say I uh, resized the slide dimension so that it was A4. So it's right. seems right. to, they feel like they've got more space. <laughs> Otherwise, they want another slide. Right. And then it's like, all right, well, each person, you're like, you, your student number and I'm multiply it by two so you know where you're at. Just, <laughs> we just limit it to one slide each. <laughs> So I'll let you in on a little secret that I, I'm pretty sure we've announced this. I don't think it's a real secret secret, but um, mm. 
coming soon to Google Docs that will be the ability to have tabbed Google Docs. Oh my! So within a Google Doc, you can have a series of tabs down the side. Yeah. There won't be kind of a an overall grid view, so you won't yeah. have that aspect of it. But you mm -hmm. will have a single document with multiple tab sections that you can jump between, and it gets around that problem you just said, like if a student is running out of room on the slide, because obviously if it's a Google Doc page, they can get in as far as they like. Yeah. So yeah, that hopefully that will be launching pretty soon. Cool. Pretty sure we've announcement. If not, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Zipped. All right. Uh, thanks for that, Kate. Much appreciated. Um, Jody, I'm going to flick back to you. I know you don't have any slides because you're in transit, but just tell us what you guys do. Over I actually, I hopped off the train <laughs> at, at this really quiet train station and literally, as you've chosen, look, there's trains all around me. <laughs> so you get what you get. Um, I said to Chris, I really I actually wanted to talk about something different rather than student work. I think sometimes we spend our day as trainers uh, talking about work with students. And I, I spend probably half my day working with adults, working with Google. And so um, I said to Chris, I wanted to talk about something different. So we have a social club at our school. Now I'm in a high school and we have staff rooms all over the campus and we can go days without seeing the same people. And so my social club is about seven of us and we use Google to run everything. Um, we set up, we've got a, we've got a, a group in chat which we use all the time. So we have the, the group chat, but we also have our files in there. So when we're organising an event, we have our to-do list, we have our minutes, we have run sheets. We've just run a trivia night and we seriously only looked at each other face-to-face -face for all of 15 minutes. And we organised the whole trivia night using, and so in Google Docs, we'll put actions in there, we'll put check boxes in there, we'll put people in comments when we want them to action things. We put notifications on so you can see when things have changed. So we really are using the power of all those notification settings and the collaboration in Google to, to run events. And I think sometimes we don't give enough credit to that in our work because being teachers, obviously, student and learning comes first. But I think the learning of the adults is just as important as the learning of the students. So, yeah, I mean, we're really big fans of it in our school because it allows us in these vast um, spaces in between seeing each other to be collaborative without actually working face to face. So I just wanted to bring attention to that without nice. slides. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Jody. I appreciate that. And it's really funny because like what you're describing there, I think like for Darren and I who are in this call, you just described like a day in the life of Google. You know, that's kind of just how we work. Um, but I realize it's probably not necessarily the way everybody works. But it's it's great that you're pointing out that like you can do that and to be able to work sort of remotely and collaboratively and asynchronously and still get a lot of things done, even though you're maybe not face to face. And a high school is a different body to a primary school where you literally may go a week without seeing yep. a teacher that you do do work with, but you don't necessarily need to see them. So we use the power of it. We use a lot in high school. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Okay, let me get back to, uh, <laughs> the, uh, see if I can jump straight to the slide this time. Um, okay, here we go. Yes, jumping straight to this one. So um, what's new with Google? So uh, as every month, I try and round up a few uh, of the latest things. Darren, feel free to jump in on any of these, of course, my friend. Um, but these are just some of the things I've noticed. Uh, if you Google workspace updates, you'll actually end up on the up workspace updates blog, and it will tell you everything that we change every month. Um, I just try and pull out the handful of things that I think are probably most interesting and relevant to you as a teacher, but there is lots and lots of things happening every single month, lots of changes going through. Um, so one of the first ones, just want to mention, uh, if you put a video in Google Drive, um, now it will automatically just generate the captions for you. You might be thinking, didn't it always do that? I thought it did, but apparently it didn't. So um, drop a video in now. If it's got an audio track on it with with uh, voice on it, it will automatically generate the captions for you. So you can have closed captions on the videos, even if they're in Drive, not necessarily in YouTube. Um, this one here, you knew this was coming if you've been paying attention uh, for, for the last sort of 12 months or so now, uh, the appointment slots in Google Calendar, uh, which are the old appointment system that we had, and then we updated it. You had the option of using the new appointment schedules um, appointment schedules are now officially 
the only thing you've got access to. So we've now turned off the slots, and so schedules is the only thing. Uh, that's, I think, a good thing because it is seriously way better than the old system. Um, but if you're looking for the old system, it ain't there no more. Uh, this is a neat one, um, and I, I think this is probably the first steps into a change that I think we'll probably do more in this space. But right now, you've always been able to add uh, guardians into Google Classroom. So uh, a teacher can go in and add the parent email addresses or the guardian email addresses to each student uh, next to their names, just like you're seeing in the little GIF there. Um, but what we've got now is a share button at the top, and you can create a link which you then send out to all the guardians. It's the same link for everybody, so it's not a different link for every for each person. It's the same link for everyone. But when they click it, it'll personalise to them based on their being logged in with the account that they're using as their guardian. Um, and they will be able to go into the Google Classroom. So unlike the previous system where they got an email, which was kind of like a summary of all the things that was happening in the class, now they can actually go in and visit the Google Classroom. They will only be able to see their own student, of course, uh, but they will be able to see the work that that student has has due. Um, so uh, I think it's you know, definitely a step in the right direction. I know many of you are looking for ways that you can bring your, your parents uh, more close to the sort of work that's going out there so they can have a bit of visibility. Um, and you've now got a little bit more of that. Um, I was a bit excited about this one the other day. This this happened completely unexpectedly for me. Um, and, and I know Kate, who we just heard from, Kate mentioned to me a couple of months ago, you know, one of the one of the things that she was less excited about with Read Along, which is a great tool, by the way, where, where, where an AI assistant will listen to the student read and correct them and give them advice and guidance on their reading. It's literally like if you could have uh, 30 parent helpers come into your classroom and listen to the kids read. Um, we've got a little AI assistant that does that for you. Uh, the only thing some people struggled with is the, the AI assistant had an American accent and sometimes would correct children's pronunciation to simply not the way we speak, at least not in Australia. Um, so the good news is that Dia now has an Australian accent. Um, sorry to my Kiwi friends, we were working on, on more accents and hopefully we'll get to yours soon but uh, if you're australian and you're listening to this the good news is that dia now speaks with an aussie accent so i reckon that's going straight to the pool room okay uh, a couple of other things happening in classroom um if you are a classroom administrator so if you can get into the back end of, of uh, the admin panel for google uh, workspace you can now set grading periods so we've had grading periods for a little while now but it's been something that the teachers have had to do and it's obviously pretty inefficient if every teacher has to go in and enter the same information over and over. So uh, systems and dioceses and large schools can now put this in centrally and it gets pushed out to everybody uh, and all the teachers will then have any. Now it doesn't affect existing classrooms, it's only affecting classrooms going forward. Uh, although I think you can inherit it. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, so the the uh, the admins will put all the term dates in and all the new classrooms will have that. That means you can assign work to students and you can assign it to specific semesters or terms um, and the grade book will then respect. You can look at all the grades for term three, for example. So that's pretty neat. And then the other thing that just got released related to that, just very similar, is um, grade calculations. So the way you calculate your grade, whether you just add up the numbers, whether you weight them, whether you weight them by category, um, again, you've been able to do this individually inside Classroom, but now you can do this at the admin level. And so you can make this change right across your entire organisation. So if you're a large school system, you can get complete consistency now by pushing this out across everybody. The other thing is you can create the mark categories um, down the bottom there. You can see if you want to, you know, your school, my, my, my school when I taught had a policy that, you know, classwork was worth so much and exams were worth so much or whatever. Uh, you can set that now centrally and push it out and everybody gets a consistent experience. Each teacher can manually override any of that if they want to, but it at least is consistent coming from the admin. Uh, and then uh, just to sort of wrap up a bit, we're going to be quick today. You guys have been awesome. Um, there's there's a couple of changes happening inside Google uh, Classroom for Google Drive files within Classroom. And it's a subtle but important thing. You'll see in the little screenshot there, it's telling you that those attachments 
that the students have attached to their work, it's now telling you when they were last edited. So you, you'll get at a glance, be able to see you know, like that kid hasn't been there for two days or this one you know, was, was done last night. It'll give you that sort of view. And then I think if you go into the actual grading view, it gives you another snapshot of that as well. But it's giving you... Um, uh, <laughs> So I'm just reading for those for those of you watching the live stream, you're missing Kate's comments, but um, we'll talk about that. Uh, and and that kind of wraps us up for the what we want to cover this week. Unless any of you want have any um, questions, one of the one of the feedback we did get from last year from doing these webinars is people said, you know, an hour is too long. Can you shorten them down a bit? So we were aiming for 45 minutes. We got this one down to half an hour. So there you go. Everyone loves getting more time back. Um, we would love some feedback on these sessions. Uh, if you are in this session today, please, please, please scan that uh, code or put that address in and um, uh, just answer a couple of really simple questions on feedback to this. We do draw a name every month and send a prize out to someone as a thank you for filling in the feedback form. And last month it was Rebecca Richter. And so I've got something in the mail heading off to Rebecca uh, as of now. And next month, maybe it's you, fill in that form. Uh, if you want to get any of the uh, this webinar, this will go up online into our YouTube channel um, in the next couple of hours. Uh, but if you want to access this or any of the others we've done, uh, they're all available in our YouTube playlist. You can scan the code or just go to bit.ly slash LWG underscore rewatch, and you've got access to all of the previous episodes. And then finally, if you are the sort of person that likes to collect certificates for attending PD sessions like this, uh, you can scan that code, fill in the form, and uh, the magic squirrels will work away in the back end and create a certificate for you and send it to you immediately to your email. And that, my friends, wraps up uh, another Learn with Google for August. And uh, there's some addresses on the screen there. If you are seeing things that we're showing you and you're thinking, that's funny, I don't see that in my account, uh, it may be because your school system or something has some particular policies. Uh, so you, you can reach out to them through those email addresses if you need to. Um, otherwise, just talk to your uh, school admin people. All right. I'm going to turn the recorder off. But as usual, we're going to hang around if anyone has any questions. Thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time.